What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the Sit Down Sports Edition. Here with my man again, the man, the myth, the legend, my dog Andrew. And we're gonna go over week one. Yeah. A lot of good stuff to talk about. So, yeah. what did you think? First impressions. Where did you? How did you think the whole I'm thing so went? I'm so glad football's back. Oh. It was so nice just being able to sit down and watch games. And even Thursday night was oh, nice, I'm just saying. hanging out. And uh, it felt weird because a, a lot of it kind of felt like. I thought it was going to feel like preseason where right. people were making so many crazy mistakes. And there are a few games like that that we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think it was so – it felt good. It felt authentic. It did yeah. not feel like a COVID week one. Right. It felt like a real solid week one of the NFL for the most part. Yeah, and it's, um, it was interesting because there were some teams that I was not expecting to do what they did. Did what they did. Oh, my gosh. And – Let's let's let I mean let's dive right into it. Yeah, let's, let's jump dive right in. Let's jump into Thursday night. Yep. Texans Chiefs. Chiefs took it 34-20. Mm. Um, nothing too unexpected came out of that game. Uh, Texans played about as expected. David Johnson had a game. He did. I, I was happy. For that him. surprised me. I wasn't uh, expecting that. We'll see if he can keep that up. Right. Um, and then Kansas City just. They did what they, they did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, Clyde Edwards Hilaire came out and rushed. Yeah. Twenty five rushes, one hundred thirty eight yards, and touchdown. I don't know. If he can continue to produce like that, nobody's stopping that he'll, team. He'll be a top five back. Nobody's going to stop that team. Yeah. Because they, they tell, I never would have expected the Kansas City Chiefs to have more pat, or run, rush attempts than pass attempts over a game mm -hmm. with Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback. And, and I think that's why they won because you look at you know a COVID week one mm -hmm. and the simpler your offense was, and you'll see this throughout – all these games, the, the simpler a team keep kept their offense, the better they performed. The, better they performed. Yep. the more crazy wrinkles and crazy stuff they tried to do, the the worse it was. At the, and that's that's funny you said that because now that I'm starting to think about that, that is true actually. All the teams that kept it very simple, they kept the they kept the simplicity at, at the peak at the premium. Yeah. They they performed at a higher level. Yeah. For sure. And to keep on that point, let's go to Dolphins Patriots. Patriots kept it real simple on offense. Very much. So. They won 21-11. Wasn't anything flashy, mm -hmm. not anything you're going to see on a bunch of highlight reels. There was one highlight you saw from the game that was Cam Newton getting that big right, run. Right, that bootleg to the to, right there. And, yeah. yeah, and scored a touchdown. It was great. But other than that, you really didn't get much highlight reel plays out no. there because they ran a very basic offense but just out-executed the Dolphins. That was exactly it. That, you hit the nail on the head. And I would say the thing that makes me nervous with the Patriots is that I just don't think that offense can sustain that kind of play style. It's just not going to work. Sure. It's not going to work. I that many rushes by Cam Newton. Knowing, you know. knowing Bill Belichick, he's going to add more wrinkles to the offense. They never run the same play, the same order of plays or the same type of plays that they do game in and game out. Uh, you're gonna see. I think you're gonna see a lot more wrinkles. You're gonna see games where Cam Newton's got pass for 30 times a game. You're gonna Passing. see games like you're gonna see games like you did just now, and you're gonna see games where they hand it off the running backs all game. Right. They're gonna do the same thing they did with Brady, except now they have more options. Sure. My biggest question is pass to who? You know, they're, they're like like we had talked sure. about last week. There's not many good groceries yeah, in that exactly. shopping cart. I mean, you really only have Edelman. Yeah. I don't. I don't trust Nikhil Harry. Mm -hmm. And I can't even name the other um, ones. I think Mohamed Sanu is still there. Too. No, he's I think, gone. No, he was. Oh no, he, he opted released, out. He yeah. opted out. No, he got. Oh released. no, he got released. He got yeah. cut. He got cut. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. But like you had said, I, I have faith in Belichick. He'll pull something out of the hat. He always does. So um, Fitzpatrick made a few more mistakes than I thought he would. He threw three picks. Yeah. Hits. That was a little strange. And I think I think it's because he felt the pressure. He was playing in New England, and they felt this need to put up points early. Like we talked about last week when yeah. he's playing ahead. He doesn't make many mistakes when he right. has to play from behind and try to make big plays. The plays sometimes make him. Yeah, and for that sure. Was very easy. That was it. Yeah. At, at this rate, I'm, I'm expecting two of my week three or four. I could. I would see four or five. Okay. Just because I think they're going to shelter him a little bit. Okay, makes sense. Now let's jump to this. Is one of the the crazier games of the week? Uh, Eagles and football team. Washington <laughs> football team. <laughs> it was weird to say. Uh, uh, so Philly and Washington. Um, listen, let me tell you, I'm so happy the Eagles lost. I despise <laughs> the Eagles, and I despise all the I mean, as a Patriots fan, fans. yeah, you, you saw them two Super Bowls. And you know what was funny? Even before they had, even before they had beat us in the Super Bowl, I still did not like the Eagles at all. Yeah. Not in the slightest. So I'm so glad that the football team <laughs> yeah. could pull one out of the hat. That, that shocked me. For, yeah, for shocked sure. Shocked me. Um, and, and we were talking about it last time. I was telling you, don't be surprised. 
and you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of like Ooh, toot my own horn today because like Washington football team that defense played like a top ten yeah, defense. They played their ass that off. pass rush was crazy. Yep. They got after Carson Wentz in that second half, let up zero points in the second half, and not let them come back. Sure. And win the game. They won 27-17. Yeah, and that defense made it easy for Dwayne Haskins yeah. to, to do what he needed to do. Do I have much faith in him? I don't. But he, no. he showed me something on Sunday. There were a lot of – and you saw this from a lot of the younger quarterbacks where they made some crazy good plays on, like, some long drives. And also made mistakes. But then there were just, like, some mistakes where you're like, what are you yep. doing? And we'll get to more of those. Joe but, like, Burrow. Dwayne – Daniel Jones last night. Uh, yep. It's just like some of them just make these crazy, weird decisions that you're just like, what are you doing? Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, the football team came out to hey, ball. Go Washington. Go Washington. They are 1 0, and everyone else in the NFC East is 0 1. Right. They right. are yeah. leading the division. He had also talked about that too, that that's, that's going to be the worst division in football. Yeah. That division. That's going to be a tough one. Yep. Uh, let's jump to Packers Vikings. This was also a little bit of a surprise. Surprising. How much of a shootout it was? Aaron Rodgers. What was it like? 80, 40, almost eighty points combined between forty-three, both teams. thirty-four, almost eighty. Oh, uh, Seventy-seven points to be exact. Can I get a defense, please? <laughs> um, defense. And, and that's where the surprise comes. Aaron Rodgers balled out uh, with Devontae Adams and against a Vikings defense that is not. They're not slouches. They're not suspect. Right. They're they're. A, Again, they're a top ten defense, yeah. but they just they got they were looking they were looking like the Washington football team absolutely against the Packers on defense. Up. Lit it up, Aaron Rodgers did. Holy smokes, and Devonte Adams, she's she's as good, I think, if not better than he was last year. He that dude keeps getting better every single year you watch him play. It says his routes get, get get cleaner. It says here he tied single season franchise a uh, single game franchise record for fourteen receptions. Didn't even know that, but yeah, that's it. The dude, the dude he's got better. He's better than he was last year. So as long as he can stay healthy, those Packers have a shot. Yeah, they have and a shot. I, if the Vikings played against pretty much any other offense in the league, they would win the game with 34 points. But yeah. You can't get mad at that offense. Not then at again, all. I mean, you know, playing from behind like that, you're going to toss the ball. Like right, you have to. Yep. Uh, Adam Thielen did have a great game as well. Eight. How many touchdowns did he have? Two or three? I think he had two. I think he had two. Yeah. Um, and they were kind of later in the game, too. Yeah. He feasted. They exactly. He was playing good. So, uh, that, that was a bit of a surprising out, uh, not outcome. I mean, any, people, people put the Packers win that Wasn't game. expecting that many points, though. Correct. Yep. Correct. Especially, I mean, I guess the defense really took the hit on, right. on not being prepared. Yep. Um, and I mean, and it's hard too because you can only prepare so much for Rodgers. Yeah, I put him in the same category as like a Russell Wilson or a Tom Brady or Drew Brees. even a Drew Brees, right? Yeah. You know, and you can only prepare so much. They're gonna if they they can pull one out of the hat at any time. That's what I was gonna nothing say. Nothing you can do to stop it. And there, are, those, those are the kind of guys where, and we'll get to Brady later, but like where you can look at them and be like, even after the off season Aaron Rodgers had with kind of discouraging them drafting a quarterback and. You know, the playoff appearance he had last year right. wasn't very impressive. You can look at him and say, like, eh, like, what's Aaron Rodgers? And then he comes out and just shows out 43 points. He lets you know. Ball. Yep. Um, and then this one was awesome. We had a ball watching this one. Jaguars, Colts. Oh. That was so much fun. Both of our predictions immediately <laughs> go out the window. Uh, but yeah, that hot take about the oh, and <laughs> Jaguars. Kiss that goodbye. That's it. They I'm done with those. Everyone was picking the Colts to win that division, and everyone was picking the Jaguars to get number one overall pick to get Trevor Lawrence. How does that look now? I'll tell you what, Philip Burris did not impress me at all. No. He didn't. He didn't have one play that I thought was impressive. Not one. And the fact that that defense got torched like that yeah. by Gardner Minshew with ah, okay, all hype aside, the dude ain't all that. He ain't sliced bread, you know what okay. I'm saying? Like, yeah, for sure. He's okay. He's a starting quarterback, depending on the team he's on. Sure. I mean, yeah, I would say this. If you put him in a place like the Falcons, or you put him in a place like the Colts, or you put him in a place like Tampa, or the Saints, if you Probably put it started. 30 out of 32 teams, he's not going to start. Right. He wouldn't start over Sam Darnold. He wouldn't start over Josh Allen. He wouldn't. I don't think he would start over a lot of quarterbacks, honestly. He, might, he probably should start over Sam Darnold. But. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, and we'll, we'll get to, you know, some of the real thoughts we have about some of these guys. But, like, 
Gardner Minshew had 95% completions. You want to know what? He didn't, three touchdowns? He didn't make mistakes. He didn't. That's it. And, and Barely. This is what's so funny. This is my biggest hate from week one. We have talked about this. I think all these games are going to be close. Yep. In the first five weeks, I think all the games are going to be close. And Most then of these were. And then the talent is going to start to separate. And sure. then the teams who are supposed to win big are going to start to do such. But I think the first five weeks, all these games. Any games. Yeah, can you yeah, pick yeah. them almost. Yep. Sure. I, and I, was, it was, I think it was really cool watching the Jags. Absolutely. I, I, it was, was so great. cool. It was so much fun watching yeah, I think the they had fans in the stands, no? Yeah, they were the only team on that Sunday uh, 1 to one to four thirty. One to four thirty right. block that had. I don't. I don't know if the last three games had fans either, but um, in that block, I think all of Sunday, no other f- stadium had fans except for the Jags. Because I think only Florida um, teams in Kansas City are allowed to have fans right now. So yeah, something like that. Yep. Um, all right, let's hop to the. Uh, oh, the poor Lions. DeAndre Swift dropping passes. In DeAndre, the end, DeAndre Swift. The yeah, I'm not even going to say anything other than that. DeAndre Swift, you got to catch that ball, you big fella. Catch that ball. It literally, I don't know what I don't know what happened. I think he's just like he hit him. He choked. I think, I think his controller died there. <laughs> <laughs> literally hit him dead in the hands, and he went to go like shift the ball and then gone. See, it's one of those things what? where like you mentioned the controller dying. If I'm playing Madden and my receiver drops the ball in the end zone in the last play of the game, I'm chucking my controller through the screen. Oh yeah. I feel bad for for Matt you, Stafford. You say, you say that doesn't happen in a real NFL game. He's played. Just did. He flat out dropped. Yeah. If he catches that, Lions win probably 30-27. Instead, Bears win 27-23. Yeah. Uh, was... And Trubisky with a really suspect first half. Absolutely. Wins the game. Kind of a tale of two halves. Wins the game in the second half. And you know what? I thought Matt Stafford played really consistent the whole game. Actually, yeah. I thought he played pretty well. Yeah. He, Defense didn't do any favors in the for, second half. Not at all. For him, for him doing what he did off a year layoff and breaking his back for less of better terminology, for lack of better terminology, I thought he actually played pretty lights out. Yeah. And Mitch Trubisky, I still don't understand why he's starting. I don't know why you brought Nick Foles there it, it's, to, <laughs> to have him start. It's strange because you watch Mitch play, and there are some plays where you look and you're like, whoa, that was a really nice play. Like, oh, man, he fit that like, and there are other plays where you're like, how is this man playing at a professional level? Which is scary, because you can't have that. You can't have it that is. kind of fluctuation. Not as a starting quarterback in the NFL. You can't no. do that. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely strange. Um, let's hop to uh, Raiders-Panthers. Uh, that was a tight one at the end. You kind of got to shake your head a little bit at the Panthers' decision to hand off to their fullback when you got the, probably the number one running back yeah. in the NFL on your roster. I don't even think that's arguable. I and think that's just a fact. There's so many different things they could have done. Is that, I mean, they could have obviously handed the ball to Christian McCaffrey. He could have tossed, could have stretched, could have run it up the middle. He's quick. He could find a hole. Right. I mean, he ran in between the tackles all at Stanford. Yeah. He knows how to do that. <laughs> you could have ran play action. That They were loading the box. They knew you were going to run it up the middle. It was just a matter of how. So you could have run play action and, and made something else work right. or throw them off, but they just decided to go with probably the safest option that the Raiders were the most ready for was exactly. the fullback dive. And that's the thing too, is like I don't I can't recall the time when that's actually worked. I've seen it a bunch, yep. but I've never seen it actually work. It's a scared play. Like we're scared, we don't want to mess up, that's so let me, way to describe let me it. hand it off quick to a fullback that and see if the big boy can make it. it. And head coach it's true. Head coach even said, like, if I could go back and change the play call, I mean, obviously we all would, but like, of he's like, I-, I probably shouldn't have done that. That was dumb. And I'm like, yeah. Hey, rookie, rookie head coach, you live yeah, and learn. Sure. And all in all, though, I wasn't, I actually was impressed the way the Panthers played. I thought they surged back. They had the back against good. the wall a lot of that second half, and they were answering, the, they were answering the bell every single time. So yeah. I actually was really impressed, and I was impressed with the Raiders as well. Watch out for Henry Ruggs, though. He got hurt. Yeah, that was and that was, was a little knee, scary. It was a knee, not an ankle, by the way, which makes me even more nervous. And he was doing really well. He was tearing it up. It, while he was on the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh Jacobs had a day, too. He had three rushing touchdowns. That was big for Which him. is a career high, which means he's only getting better. Um, granted, Panthers defense, not great. Right. But um, that's still a great showing from the Raiders, I, I think. Both teams played well. I, th- I thought that was one of the most competitive games of the day. Yeah. Consistently, from start to finish. 
They were neck and neck, and they were, they were battling. The because you time. had the shootout with Green Bay and Minnesota where they were going back and forth, but Green they, Bay kind of pulled away at the end. Yeah. Minnesota was fighting back at the end. They had a garbage time touchdown at the end. They made it look mm -hmm. a lot closer than yes, it was. It never really felt that close. Right. I never felt like Green Bay was threatened at all. Mm -hmm. That, that this game was, was both teams. Anyone's ball game. Right, right. Uh, one game that was not anyone's ball game, uh, Bill's Jets. Cool. This was the only real blowout outside of the Ravens. It wasn't Browns. a blowout at the end again. Garbage time garbage. touchdown. It was 27-17. The Bills were making mistakes too, but the Jets were just awful. I didn't realize how deprived of talent they were until I, I watched them on Sunday. You really realize when Le'Veon Bell comes off the field Whoa. with an injury. Yeah, speaking of which, I told you he was hurt. Yeah. And remember I told you he was yeah. grabbing his hamstring? I didn't see that. Hamstring, yep. Yep. You don't realize... You, you did, I did not, like like you said, you don't realize how strapped for talent they are when their best player on their team is out, and you're like, oh my god, this team can't do anything. Nothing. Nothing. And now you get to Gardner Minshew or Sam Darnold, and I'm like, I mean, based on last week, Gardner Minshew's on a different tier of quarterback than Sam, probably a few tiers different quarterback than Sam Darnold. Sam yeah. Darnold, that was, I, I get into this sometimes where like, USC quarterbacks, Lately, since like Carson Palmer, that hasn't been a good one. Mark Sanchez made two AFC Championship games on the back of a really good running game and defense, but that's it. Matt Liner, nope. Sam Donald, nope. And that's the thing, yeah. Cody you, Kessler, who? Yeah, <laughs> USC. They are. They're not a quarterback school. <laughs> they're not a very quarterback school. But people keep going for it. I, I know, which is interesting. But, and hey. the Sam Donald experiment is not working. No, it is not. It shouldn't, yeah. have, it shouldn't have been an experiment in the first place. No, it shouldn't have. Because it was funny was is that that game was up with the, up with the taking because Josh Allen didn't do anything to impress me. Fumbled twice. He made a lot of mistakes. Especially, I thought he made a lot of mistakes in the red zone. He was not good in the red zone at all. Nope. And, but Sam Darnold made less. I couldn't even, he probably made as, as many plays as I can count on one hand, honestly. Mm -hmm. He did. So quarterback play was not good there. And then for the next game I'm seeing on on your phone. This was this was the oh, bad oh, oh. one. And part of me is like, okay, we expected it, but did we expect it this bad? The Ravens and the Browns, the Ravens took it 38-6. What do you what do you do with the Browns? Yeah, what do you do? It's like you build this roster that is full of all pro talent, full of it, on the defense and the offensive side right. of the ball. And they just get toasted. I was expecting the Ravens to win, but I was not expecting to be that bad. No, and I think what, it, like you had said there, Andrew, it, it's so curious to me because if you go, if you go based off, off paper, if you just go rosters based off paper, they're probably in, in the top 10 in the league, For sure. talent wise, maybe even top five. Sure talent-wise in all of the league. Yeah. And Baker Mayfield put this up six points. And I think it was two field goals. It wasn't even a touchdown. I think it was two field goals. I, I believe so. And you know, my question is, what do you do with Baker Mayfield? I, I, this team might be a bust. Because- How many, I mean, how many chances do you give, brother? It's like, dude, you have Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr. You have a, who's that? I don't know who the tight end is. I believe they just picked up- uh, Oh, Ngakwe. Ngakwe. Who's a stud. And you have Nick Chubb, who's probably going to be, like you have predicted, the, the rush leader in all of the NFL this year. And Kareem Hunt. What else do you need? What You can't even put more groceries in that shopping cart. And they have a good offensive line. An offensive yeah. line is not something to sneeze at. I mean, it's like, what else do you need, my dude? And he hasn't. it's been two years now he's had that. And, and, that's, and that's where it comes down to it. It's like, when I think of an NFL roster, I think of... You have your your foundation, which really is your quarterback and your head coach. Yep. And then you have your support, which is basically everything else. Sure. The Browns have probably one of the best supporting casts, like you said, in the NFL. If you were to take quarterback and head coach out of the equation, they're a top five team. I would agree. You throw a quarterback and head coach in there, you get 38 to 6. The Ravens are a great team. They're not that. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It have been should like that. not be that big nope. of a blowout, especially nope. with the roster that you have. Nope. And I can't not. imagine. I can't imagine that they won't clean house in terms of that support cast by the trade deadline. 
I can see a lot of those guys getting tossed around. Do not be surprised if Odell gets tossed around. Jarvis Whoa. gets tossed around. Uh, obviously, they just signed Miles Garrett. They can keep him. Um, but I, don't be surprised if they're looking for uh, maybe Odell to the Bears for Nick Foles. Not for Nick Foles, but obviously Nick Foles and some draft picks or something like that. To just You need some kind of spark. Nick Foles is a great spark guy. Mm -hmm. He takes you to the Super Bowl with a spark. He wins it. And wins it. And this is a team that, I mean, probably, easy to say, better than that Eagles team in terms of on-paper talent. 100%. That won that Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, I don't know what you do with the Browns. They, they, they could win any given Sunday, sure. But like... But the thing is, is you expect them to lose, though. And that's a problem. Yeah! You don't expect them to do anything. No. And that's a big problem. Like, again, especially with that roster, with that talent that you have. Why are the expectations that low? Because you get stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, it's rough. Yikes. Baker um, Mayfield. What are you doing, Baker? This one was fun to watch early, but it started to get away at the end. Uh, Seahawks-Falcons. Yeah. It was fun to watch early. They were going back and forth a little bit, but, I mean, Russell Wilson just ran away with the game. Yeah. DK had that had that drop there. That was oh, miserable. He, he came back for it though. But he, he got he made that back. He had sure. a nice nice little touchdown there, nice tug. But yeah, I thought that game was went as expected. I didn't for, sure. for a second think the Falcons were gonna win that game. Right. But I thought they put out a pretty good performance. That defense did the best they could. Yeah. When you have Russell Wilson over there, he's you know he's a he's a master when it comes to improvisation, mm -hmm. and he did a fair amount of improv. It wasn't it wasn't by the script necessarily, mm -hmm. but. Honestly, I think Seattle plays better when they don't go by the script, when they just freestyle and do what they do. And the offense had a great, great showing in uh, on the Atlanta side. Yep. Uh, they had three wide receivers in the top ten in receiving yards in the league uh, for that week. Bro, Julio, um, eight. Julio, Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley, um, and there was one other guy. And he just went off. He, he was like the, he was obviously the third receiver, but he was in that top ten. I can't remember what his name yeah, was. Yeah, I can't either. Let me try and see really quick. But like, they they played as well as they could have. Like, mm -hmm. if this Atlanta Falcons team played pretty much any other team other than Seattle, they would probably come out with a win because they're they they really executed and fired on all cylinders. Yeah, they did. Matt Ryan played well too. Yeah, played absolutely. Well. Yep. Um, you're looking at. His name is Russell Gage. He had nine receptions, 114 yards. You ever heard of that name? No. He Calvin, Calvin Ridley had nine receptions, 130 yards, two, two touchdowns. Yep. Julio Jones, nine receptions, 157 yards. Why does he get touchdowns? I don't know, man. Calvin Ridley takes them all. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, I, I think he gets them close, and then, I mean, you got guys like, like Todd Gurley had a touchdown. Uh, really so, that, so there's your three touchdowns, right. and I think they went to two at one point, and then they got a field goal. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's your game there. Um, let's go over to, I believe it was Cincinnati and uh, LA Chargers. That was a slog. That I'm going to be honest. Yeah, that was a... It was a slog until the end, because there really was... Both offenses were stagnant. Pretty they nice. didn't do yeah. anything. Uh, I was oddly surprised at how off the Chargers offense was. I was too. They, the yep. receivers were dropping balls all over the place. Tyrod Taylor didn't look like he knew what he wanted to do. No. He didn't make any terrible mistakes. I don't think he threw a pick. Nope. But they really didn't, didn't make any big plays either, right? I'll tell you what, that man Joe Burrow, he better stay in that ice bath for a long time he after that game. Because he got pounded. Yeah. That whole game was getting hammered. I don't even want to know how many times he got sacked. I'm going to have to look it up. But it had to have been at least four. Yeah. At least four. But I also, I'll say this. Outside of that ridiculously bad interception he had where it was like a shovel pass that was right weird. to Ingram. And those like, are what, that was one of those weird what? plays where you're like, you're playing okay, and then it's like, what was that? Yeah, what was that, honestly? It's like a shovel pass right to the defense. Yeah. It's like, it's like you didn't see him there. Wait, second. what? Yeah. But... Uh, after after that, I would say he actually he played pretty well. That last drive was awesome. It was very good. That was super fun to watch, and it was unfortunate that it ended with their kicker getting hurt on that. Yeah, that hurt. Really sh <laughs> hurt <laughs> on yeah. that last short. I think it was a thirty-yard field goal or something like that. Um, AJ Green pushed off in the end zone. That was pretty clear. Yeah. Um, Bengals fans would be pissed, but 
it was pretty clear. And I'll say, if I were a Bengals fan, I would be happy that at least it was close. Yeah, for sure. Because in all actuality, Chargers aren't an awful. Team. They shouldn't have. It shouldn't have been that close. They really had no business being in a game like that. Yeah. It should have been a lot, a lot more separated than it was. But kudos to the Bengals. Watch out for them. For this sure, year. they might be able to do a little something. Yeah. Um, let's hop to this. Was a fun one. A little bit of an upset, but once you look, once you think about it a little harder, it's not all that surprising. Right. Uh, Arizona and San Francisco. Arizona took it 24-20 against uh, reigning NFC champs, the 49ers. I got four things. We called the 49ers doing this. Yes. Super Bowl hangover. Yep. We thought this was going to happen. Great thing it's week one, right. but when you lose week one to a division rival, mm-hmm. that's a big Actually, goal. five things. George Kittle. Yep. Feasted. He did. And then Arizona, it was Kyle Murray. DeAndre uh, Hopkins, and then Buda Baker. Buda Baker. Buda Baker was everywhere. Yeah. That dude made so many like freaking tackles. Every single stupid. every single play that San Francisco had that went beyond the line of scrimmage even a little bit, you see number 32 just hanging every out right over there. He, Buda Baker, know, he everywhere. attacks the football every play, and you need something like that from your mm-hmm. safety. It's just, yep. and he killed it. And then Chandler Jones did what he was supposed to do. I don't think he had any sacks, but... He was applying pressure. They were getting there. Yeah, for sure. Close. And there was that one play where uh, Jimmy G was literally spinning in circles. Oh, yeah, that's right. He spun turned around, times. spun once, and he was like, oh, no. And he spun again, and he pump faked and lost it. And then he got, he got hit and sacked, and it was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, and that's so exemplary of like. That sounds up that whole game for How that game really yeah. went. And it was 24 20, so it wasn't a blowout or anything, but it. It was at points where you really felt like the Cardinals were firing on all yep. cylinders. Uh, Kyler with that long, it was like 25 yard rushing touchdown. Yeah, that was big um, for them. They needed that. And he was running around a lot. I don't think they were ready for that. Nope. And oddly enough, they weren't ready for that. Nope. He did that all season last year. Right. Um, that could have been conditioning. It could have been. Yeah. A lot of things, but. I think that's that's part of the problem you run when you have such a good outside pass rush, like a Bosa brother. Mm-hmm. It's they're so ready to get they're so the aggressive to get to the quarterback that they might not contain that outside that exactly. outside rush, so they're able to slip out it a lot. Uh, this one we thought we had pegged in the beginning of the game, and then it kind of got away. Uh, Tampa and New Orleans. Ugh. Um, Broke my heart, Tom. That first drive was Ugh. awesome. Oh, it was awesome. He made he made that one play on the sideline where he threw it like up in the air and hit him right in the God, bucket. Right in the it was bucket. fantastic. There was two pass interference calls on that drive alone. Yep. Took him down even the that field. even with that with that pi on the left yep. sideline with Evans, he still put that in the bucket. Where Evans almost if it wasn't pi, he that. called it. I, yeah. Um, Brady ran it in from three yards out, which was weird, but he got it. Um, but then after that point. The Bucks never really got back on the sled. So sloppy. So many penalties. Dude. Yeah. That was one that was, probably, that was probably the first game we watched that day where we were like, ooh. It was no a lot of mistakes happened Stop. In this game. And everybody everybody I see, because everybody knows I'm a Patriots fan and I stand in my shields, everybody knows. Perfect. So I was at work uh, yesterday. Everybody's like, oh, Tom Brady looked pissed. Tom Brady looked pissed. Well, yeah, when your offense has freaking 12 penalties for sure. 110 yards, yeah, mm-hmm. you'd be mad. And he wasn't exempt from the mistakes either. No. And he, he threw two picks. And one of them was six. One, that one was definitely his fault. We were very confused as to what was. They were both his fault. Yeah. Bruce Arians confirmed that Mike Evans had the right read on that play. Yeah. Tom Brady didn't make the right read. So we'll see. Um, they are one of those teams, though, that we kind of expected to start slow. Yeah, you call you did call you did predict this, and the more that I was watching the game, it looked like your prediction was right on right on target because they did look sloppy, and I'm excited though because they they showed yes they showed glimpses, and if they can if they can figure out how to make that in every every in every drive kind of thing, mm-hmm. there's I don't know many people many defenses are gonna be able to stop that. And there were some questionable things we saw from that game where Tampa was throwing to, I want to say number 17. 17. I don't even know what his name is. I don't but you got weapons like Chris Godwin. Granted, Mike Evans had a, had a hamstring injury, yeah. but he was still out there balling. O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard. Cameron Brady. Rob Gronkowski. Cameron Bray. Um, Scotty. LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn. <laughs> they could all catch out of the back. It's too. like, what? How do you get the ninth guy down in terms of talent? on the field 
that many times. And, and it looked like they targeted him a decent yeah. amount of times. And every time they did, it didn't work. And what about Scotty Miller? Even Scotty Miller. Scottie, yeah. yeah. Where is he at? You it's know? just like, it was a little confusing. And I think that's the team that we looked at that were trying to do too much. Yeah. And they didn't simplify their offense enough to where they thought they had all of this going on. And it came down to it and they faced a, a defense like that was New ready. Orleans that was ready. They were ready for it. They're there and then that defense is good. I underestimated that defense. They have a lot of stuff in that on that defense. And Alma Camaro. I think that was the that was the game changer. He had a rough first quarter, but after that he really He was ridiculous up. after that. And Mike Evans, uh, not Mike Evans, Mike Thomas. Yep. He didn't really do anything. No, they didn't I think really he got hurt much. actually. Yeah, towards the tail end of the game, I don't know why they still had him in the game. Towards the tail end of the game, uh, he got rolled up on, had a little bit of an ankle injury. He's still getting evaluated, but that would be a big blow to, the, to New Orleans. Huge. Um, if they ended up having any issues down the line, that's going to be a problem. Because um, they don't really have that many other weapons. Emmanuel Sanders was making some catches. He was, actually. He was eating a little um, bit. He's, he's still a good receiver. He can still play football. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, let's hop to Cowboys Rams. I caught most of this game. Um, <laughs> I'm not terribly surprised. I'm so happy. This um, is another game. I was so happy to I see had, this. I had the Rams win this game. No, I did too. Um, that front seven is nasty. Oh. Um, Aaron Donald, you could you could take the the plays from that game, throw it on a highlight reel, and just say defensive player of the year. Forget about it. You don't have to play the rest of the 15 games. No. He was tossing people around. Did you see like that they one play? Babies. Which one? He, well, <laughs> the one in particular where he was driving that, that uh, I think it was a guard, yep. back into a Zeke. Zeke tried to double down on the block. Threw him. He just lifted him up Decleated. off the ground and just slammed him on the ground and was still at Dak Prescott. What is that? Did you see the one where he took the center and the guard and shoved them both to the side together? Threw one of them to the ground. The other one oh. said, forget it. I'm not dealing with it. And he almost sat back again. It's just like that kind of pressure where, sure, he didn't get the sack. But and he did get a few sacks. Yeah. But he didn't get that sack. But, like, that rattles a dude. You see a guy like mm-hmm. Aaron Donald come out and play after play after play, and it's relentless. He didn't get tired. That's that's scary. That'll mess you up. And it did mess him up. Dak Prescott didn't put up any points in the second, and second you, half. And you got dogs back there, like Ramsey. Um... Harris, yeah. Harris Jr., people like that. I mean, whew. all you needed, like you said, a good front seven will make any any secondary look really yeah. good. And, it, and that defense, other than Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and a few other guys, like there's not much to write home about with that defense. But like those pieces make it so much easier for the rest of that defense to play. And they're so good. That's the thing. You know, when you have when you have pieces that are that good, mm-hmm. you don't need a lot of them. Right. You don't need a lot of them. I, think, I mean, you got two guys that you can argue are the best at their position. Mm-hmm. Argue. Oh, side note, real quick. Ezekiel Elliott, that tattoo you have in your stomach is terrible. <laughs> Get that shit removed as soon as you can. That is so cheesy. Feed me with two spoons on the side? Are you serious? <laughs> Looks like you need to stop eating, my brother. You need to lose a couple pounds, for real. I got no comment. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's hop to um, Pittsburgh and uh, New York Giants. Giants and Steelers. Uh, it was a close game mm-hmm. up to a point. Um, there was one drive where I was like, all right, if this pans out, I'm, I'm going to stay up and watch the rest of this game. And then it, it, did. it didn't. And then I was like, um, Daniel Jones. He looked good for most of the game, but again, there was the there were these plays that you saw where you're like, "What are you thinking? What are you doing?" Uh, it was a 19 play drive, drove his team down the field to like the that five yard line, to the left. scrambled to the left, Ugh. got ambushed, decided to try and throw it, and got hit with, at the same time. With tossed Bud it Dupree. up. three within like three feet of his throwing arm. It's like, why would you? Like, honestly, yeah. I, did, I, I, I know we can say this knowing the outcome of the play, but like, I would take the sack and throw yeah. it out of bounds. Definitely. That out of bounds, not out of the bounds in the back of the end zone like he was trying to do. Like, what are you thinking? What are you trying to do there? You've made so many good decisions. That was a beautiful drive. Gorgeous drive. That's the kind of drive that, that takes the that, heart out of the defense. That's gas the defense. As yep. soon as they got that pick, 
stamina revitalized. We're ready and to go. The game was over. And then it was over. Yep. And there was yep. still a lot of time left, but in terms of momentum, there's just like mm-hmm. what you need to do. Pittsburgh was never threatened after that. No. Never. And I think the which is they didn't um, play great. I yeah. like watching that game because one of my key factors for Pittsburgh, if you remember, talked about Juju Smith Schuster. He had a good game. Can he adjust to being a one? Because last year he really didn't do a good job. Right. This game, granted, it's the Giants. Right. They're, they, they their don't, defense they don't really have a name on the at game. all. Yeah. But it's still the NFL. He performed very well. They're going to need that every game from him. For sure. In order to have it be anywhere close, they have to have Juju play like that every single time. Absolutely. Um, overall, I was kind of impressed with the Giants. To a point. Yeah. And then at that point, they start start Giants be the Giants. But hey, I'll tell you what. We already know if they're kryptonite. You stop Saquon, that offense doesn't go anymore. That was bad. You stop Saquon, that Nine offense yards. doesn't move. Six, actually. And we, and we talked about that last time. We were saying if Saquon can get the ball going, then the offensive line will be better because of it. Mm-hmm. He didn't move the ball. I think that was the tied for fifth or fourth least, uh, least amount of yards gained by a running back with 15 or more carries in NFL history. And I don't want to. And, uh, and I'm not. I'm not going to jump on the Saquon wash train. Oh, definitely not. The, the offensive no line is bad, oh, and the terrible. Steelers front seven is good. Very much so. Like, yep. And they, the Steelers basically said, "Pass on us, please." Yep, that's exactly. Do what it. They did. We dare you to pass. Exactly. Yeah. And they did. And then they brought pressure once you passed mm-hmm. it. And then you make Daniel Jones make the mistakes. That's it. Um, that's and that's, it. that's the way to play the job. That was a well coached. Absolutely. By attack. Props by, by the Steelers. Props yeah. to Mike. Conley. Yep, definitely. Uh, and this one broke my heart. Woke up this morning to the no. to it. I, I couldn't watch the game, which I wanted to, but um, Titans Broncos was 16 14. Steven Goskowski. Steven Goskowski missed, missed three four, field goals in an extra, and an extra point. point bef- before but he hit that, that game point, winner. And then hit the last one. Oh. Granted, the last one could not have been a shorter pick. Literally, it was from the one yard line. And it was still close, too. Yeah. It wasn't like he like hit that home with authority. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like snuck into the middle. Um, from what I could see from highlights, I, again, I got I got to do more research on the game, but um, the Broncos struggled on offense not because they couldn't move the ball, because they made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, they're having trouble finishing. Yeah, they're having trouble finishing drives. Like you said, they were getting a ton of yards. They were moving the ball well, but when it came time to put the ball in the end zone, it almost seems like they they lost track of what they're trying to do. And a lot of that comes from Melvin Gordon had a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played well. Did fumble the ball, which is yeah. unfortunate, but you know that is a problem with his though. It is, it is, and it's still not fixed, which is suspect. Right, and that's why having Philip Lindsay on the field is so important because you get Philip Lindsay a bulk of the carries, you get a change of pace in Melvin Gordon, but Philip Lindsay's out with turf toe yep. from the first quarter. Colton Sutton didn't play; uh, he was a game time decision. Obviously, Von Miller's out. We're gonna have to learn how to deal without him. Uh, AJ Bouye left the game early. Um, all these guys are key players on the field. Jerry Judy had an okay game, had a few key drops from what I saw, also fumbled. Um, yep. They strip sack Drew Locke twice. Um, you can't win the game giving the ball away. Too many mistakes. Times. And that's the thing. They gave the ball over three or four times. Three or four times. I think they got one of the fumbles back. If, I, if, I mean, back. listen, you don't, you don't fumble those balls three times. You know, mm-hmm. You're probably going to put points on the board and you're going to win that game. And Vic Fangio doesn't duct tape a football to every single offensive player's hands throughout the week. Can't be that sloppy. You cannot. You be that can't sloppy. win a football game like that. And yeah, I'm curious to see what Jerry Judy does because that really was. Uh, I was actually a little disappointed. He was. He had a lot of hype behind him, and again, it's one game. Sure. And I'm not saying and it's that. his He's, first NFL game in a COVID offseason. 100. So it definitely wasn't was ideal, but you're you're a receiver. You got to catch the ball. And you gotta hold on to it. You gotta catch the ball, and then once you catch the ball, you gotta you gotta make sure you keep it. Uh, you don't to. don't want to discount Derrick Henry over 100 yards. He did, yeah, but he did what he was supposed he to. He did what he was supposed he to. Knew to do. That they, was handed, they handed him the ball 30 times. Right. You get and he, he had just under four yards to carry. So like when you hand a guy 30 times, you better He's get 100 yards. Exactly. You Especially give, a guy his caliber. You give any pro running back in the NFL 30 carries, you're gonna get 100 yards. Except for Saquon Barkley. True. <laughs> I guess True. the Steelers defense, but. So there's your wrap up of week one. Um, some surprises, some suspect things going on, uh, but let's break it down on a general level. Mm-hmm. Um, your biggest surprise team. 
I would say the Cardinals. Okay. Shocked me, actually. Okay. I thought they were going to stink. Out to Cardinals, Jaguars. Okay. And I'll keep it simple. We already kind of talked about it, but that would yeah, be mine, sure. too. Cardinals, Jaguars. Uh, if I had to pick a biggest surprise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Browns. That was an un, unpredictably bad game right. for the Browns. Um, and I think it's really showing in Baker Mayfield. He's he's gotta keep he's gotta step it up. Um, I I cannot see them starting in the whole season. That was honestly I was shopping before I shopped his receivers. Yeah, but <laughs> what I'm I guess I guess my point in saying that was like shop him so you can get shop your receivers that so you, you have so many of so that you can get a quarterback sure. better than him. Um, you can't. Nope. And he's got so he's got so many ad deals and stuff like that. And I'm yeah. Like, this man better focus on football. Yeah, for real. He's, he's got to step it up. Uh, yeah, Browns definitely surprised me in a bad way. Um, most likely to improve from week one to week two. Oh, let's see. I'm thinking for me, it's either going to be the Chargers. Okay. Or it's going to be the Colts. Okay. I think either of those two teams. I think they're they're due for a game. They do for a game, because um, I think everybody else did what they were supposed to do. It just didn't go their way per se. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Eagles. Okay. Um, I think uncharacteristic second half. The first half was good. Right. They made a lot of really good plays. They did what they were supposed to. Ron Rivera just brought his guys together at that halftime and just made it happen. Uh, even though he was getting an IV, Dwayne Haskins led the halftime. Yeah. It was crazy to think about. Props to Ron Rivera for doing that. Um, but I think the Eagles come back. A little more revitalized, a little, a little angry, saying, you know, we're not, we're not that team that you saw in the second half of the last game. We're going to come out firing. Um, if that offensive line can shore up and not allow so many sacks like they did in that second half, I think you see them come back and, and win this week. Let me change my team. Can I change my team? Yeah, yeah. Tampa Bay. Uh, see, I was thinking Tampa. Tampa uh, Bay. I'm going to give them a few weeks, though. <laughs> that's, they that's do versus Carolina, team. which that defense is a little rough, so – They'll have a chance to win out mm-hmm. their games. Tampa Bay, that, that's how I'm going with. They, they can't get any, they can't go anywhere but up. And they have so much talent. I would be surprised. Uh, most likely to fall off from week one. Jaguars. Okay. I think that was an anomaly. I'm, I'm happy it happened, but I just don't see them sustaining that. I think the Colts played, like you had said, uncharacteristically bad. And I think the Jaguars played really out of their character in terms of playing lights out football for four quarters. I don't think they're doing that twice. So, um, I'm gonna say the Titans. Um, they did not have a good game. No, they didn't have a good game at all. But Broncos it was, had a worse game. Yeah, but you know what's funny with the Titans? That was a game I expected them to play. So if, if yeah. what you're saying is true, then yeah, they're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think in trouble. I think they fall off from that. I. I, I I can't see them sustaining winning games in that fashion. Right. You know what I mean? uh, it's going to be tough for them to do, and I don't think it's going to happen. That's the thing. 30 handoffs, that's a lot of runs. That's a lot. And you're going to get predictable. I don't care if you, I don't care, again, I don't care who you got to run back. If you hand the ball off 30 times, you do that every game, you can't. It's not that league anymore. Nope. No, it is not. Um, most on par. So a team that played about as well as you expected. I'm going to go with the Saints. Okay. I thought the Saints did exactly what they were supposed to do. I really did. I thought they played exactly what I expected them to play. Mm-hmm. A lot of gimmicky plays with the, with my least favorite player in the NFL. Takes a move. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought Alvin Kamara played like the Alvin Kamara of old. Yeah. Drew Brees is Drew Brees. You already know what you're going to get from him. Yeah. Um, and I think they, they only have room to improve as well because they really did it all without Mike Thomas. Yeah. He really had no impact that game at all. So... Michael Thomas turns into what he's, he has been. Yikes. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. Um, Russell Wilson, obviously, playing like Russell Wilson. Chris Carson had a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, DK Metcalf dropped the ball, wasn't expected, but it came back, had, exactly. had a game. He made a four. Uh, defense held them enough to the point where they only gave up 25 points with all of those yards, which is really the strength of that defense. Exactly. They're going to keep you out of the end zone. Exactly um, right. So I think the Seahawks really played about as well as I thought they would. Um, Falcons are a good football team, but they held them in check. Yep. So Agreed. about what I was thinking. Uh, biggest bust for a player. Baker Mayfield. Okay. Baker, not even close. Not even close to me. Baker Mayfield, one hundred percent. That was just terrible. I'm gonna go with Saquon. 
Because he's a, he's a good player that just had an awful game. Keep in mind, too, if you go back and look, when you get a second, go back and look at his carries, look at his <clears> attempts. 60% of his carries, he was he was getting contacted by the time he could take two steps. I mean, right. I don't care who you are. If you're, if you're making getting contacted after two steps with the ball, you, there's nothing you can really do. Right. Baker, he just completely shit the bed, for lack of better terminology. Yeah. <laughs> um, biggest surprise player. Hmm. Positive surprise. Right. Biggest surprise. Even though I wasn't necessarily that surprised, I didn't think he was going to produce like he did. DeAndre Hopkins. Okay. I thought, I didn't think he First was, game on a new offense. I didn't think he was going to feast like he did. Sure. That dude was unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Unstoppable. He was a freak of nature. So, that, yeah, oh, yeah. DeAndre Hopkins for me. I'm going to go with Gardner Minshew. 95% um, completions and beating your division favorite. Sure. For a lot of people. Um, you're, he almost single-handedly is making people think of the AFC South in a different light. Are the Colts the best team in the league? Are they in that division? Are the Texans now the best team in that division? Or are the Jaguars for real? Sure. And like, probably not. And the Texans probably always were. And Phil Rivers probably washed. But he's getting you to think about those questions because he played Amazing. Yep. Can he do? Can he sustain it? Probably right. not. Uh, nobody can sustain ninety-five percent completions. No. Um, but him and DJ Chark, if they keep up that tandem and keep going and they do what they do best, you got a shot. They got a shot at you know. I mean, if they, I mean, obviously if they play the way they did, they're looking at a wild card. Right. But like, can they sustain it? I don't know that, but that's why it's a surprise that's to me question. as a player right. for Gardner Minshew. Um, and your MVP for the week. MVP for the week. I'm curious if you'll say the same person I'm thinking. Hmm. Breaking news. Le'Veon Bell has been placed on IR. <laughs> Breaking news. Um, but IR for this year means he can come back in three weeks. Gotcha. However, he cannot come back until that point. Right. Uh, so Le'Veon Bell is playing on IR. Oof, that's, that's bad for the, the Jets. Trouble. Yeah. That's bad for the Jets. Let's see. My MVP for the week. I'm going to go Cam Newton, actually. Okay. I'm going to go Cam Newton because... He was another surprise player, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I kind of forgot about him, to be honest, because yeah. he did it. Just like he, we talked about. He what? didn't do anything spectacular, yeah. but they won the football game. Yeah, and he exceeded my expectations. Didn't make any mistakes. Yeah. He was a threat with his arm and with his legs. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, he really, I think he really willed that team to win because he really is it. He is yeah. the guy. You know, if he doesn't have Edelman, big trouble. So sure. he's going to have to play that every week. So MVP for the week. I'm going, I'm going Cam Newton. I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers. Mm, that's um, a good one. He lit like, it 40, up. 43 points against the lit Vikings it. defense. Oh. I, I got to pull up this man's stats. It was, it's, oh. it's just mind blowing. How he was, uh, yeah, I figured yep. in terms of just like how crazy he made them look bad. He did, he made the Vikings even, and they're not bad. I have them in fantasy, and I'm kind of mad at him. But, that, but that's, what, that's what Rogers can do, though. He just absolutely lights out 32 for 44, 364 yards, oh. zero picks. Four touchdowns. What was his huge guard? Do you know that? Uh, it doesn't show it on here. Uh, it's like a condensed kind of thing. That's but gotta be close I mean, to perfect. QBR. It's gotta be close yeah. to perfect. Um, I mean, guard issues are probably perfect. Oh. But and putting Jeez, putting that's up ridiculous. four touchdowns against a defense like the Vikings. How? Wow. The pass rush didn't get to him. Nope. The secondary didn't phase him. Devontae Adams helped him out a lot, obviously, but like, if Aaron Rodgers plays like this week in and week out, I see no reason why he would not get an MVP award yep. on the spot. Wait, well, he's due, actually. He's he due. is due. He hasn't had one in a minute. Man. And he's a good, he's an MVP caliber player almost, almost every year, but we look at him as somebody who is so, especially with the drama that happened this past offseason. 
we think he only had one Super Bowl ring. He got right. one MVP a while ago. We're talking about guys like Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, and Lamar Jackson. We forget about Aaron Rodgers and what he can do and what mm -hmm. he brings to the table. This is it. This is pro This was probably, in, a, in terms of a week one matchup, this is probably his hardest game on the schedule. Yeah, could In be. terms of that defense, in week one. Right. Did no favors. Nope. And he came out and was Lit lights it. out. Yup. That's what we call a virtuoso right there. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I didn't even, yeah. wow. Allen Robinson just requested a trade from the Chicago Bears. That would be interesting. That would be uh, very interesting. Yeah, he's not happy. Probably not getting the ball very much. He's got Mr. Trubisky as his quarterback. Go to the Broncos. Trade too. Go to Broncos. I mean, we we can do some depth at receiver, sure. Colton Sutton's might his injury might nag. You guys need studs though. Yeah, that's the thing. But dark horse, who do you have as your dark horse pick? Washington football team. Okay. Top ten defense. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep. Chase Young will have double digit sacks. He will. It's an inevitability. I like that. Um, don't be surprised. That's a great pick. Don't be surprised if they make a play at that division after the way they played against the Eagles. Arguably the best team in their division. If they can keep that up, that's crazy. I'm trying to think here. Who, who's my dark horse? You know what? I'm going with you, Ashley. I'm going with the Washington football team. Dark hey, horse. Hey, let's go. Dark let's horse. Let's go football team. Just because, like you had said, I underestimated that defense. The defense yeah. is nasty. And I think that if Dwayne Haskins keeps assuming that leadership role that he has and he keeps performing. He's really showed up. That team is going to push behind him and, and they, could be, they could be dangerous. There's always that one team that nobody expects to come out of, and, and they come up out of nowhere and they, they knock people in yeah. the mouth. So. Absolutely. Dwayne Haskins really shows some leadership at that halftime uh, with Ron Rivera having to get an IV. He's got cancer. Um, so that's What a savage being out there. He is killing Shouts it. to Ron Rivera, man, yeah. for real. That's taking, and taking a bombshell of an organization too and making it something. Yeah. Shouts to you, dude, for real. Good for him. All right, real quick. Thursday night football, you got Browns, Bengals. One word answer, who you got? Bengals. Bengals as well. Joe Burrow. I don't uh, Not Baker Mayfield. Yeah, not Baker Mayfield, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm so off that Baker Mayfield bandwagon, off that train, it's just. It's not working. It's just. Gotta know when to quit. Yeah, seriously. When when do you move on? I mean, dude, I, like you had said, I give that dude four or five weeks. If you're not performing, go sit on the bench, dude. Sit your happy ass down and go watch from the sideline, honestly, because you're not yeah. helping us win. Yeah. I mean, how you can't get that many chances. Still got Colin Kaepernick free agency. Come on now. Come on, Cap. Actually, yeah. it's not you, Cap. Ah, that's true. Come, come on, on Browns. Come on. Yeah, come on, Browns. Let's go. But all right, y'all. That was a uh, that was the week one recap. Week one recap, yeah of the sit down NFL edition with my man Andrew and again we're going to do this every Tuesday as much as we can yeah we're going to do this every Tuesday and we're going to kind of just recap the weekend we're going to keep doing less uh, kind of superlatives at the end Andrew brought that up so shouts to Andrew good job I like that that was good if you guys have any requests for anything you guys want us to hit on that we didn't hit on yeah. uh, if you guys want us to do more predictions for week two instead of going over so much week one let us know um Definitely, yeah. We're, we're open to anything. Let us yeah. know. Communicate with us and uh, hit me up on social media. Hit me up over my text if you have it. Whatever. Like, like In comment, the comments. Subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. We will see you guys next week on the Sit Down Sports Edition with my man Andrew. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a juicy, interesting week too to talk about. But until then, see you guys. Peace.